Hey everyone, welcome back to Triple R Reefer. So today I wanted to go ahead and uh, talk about the ridiculous amount of name corals that I could not remember and try to go ahead and fix those for everybody. And then I also wanted to speak about uh, kind of where I keep my, uh, my parameters. So I just sent off an ATI uh, a water test and everything came back pretty dang good. Uh, one thing I noticed was that um, my nutrients were crazy low, which I never, I never have that issue, but you know, obviously no fish um, is, is gonna cause or can lead to that. Well, <clears throat> so I actually was feeding this tank super heavy. Um, my test kits were not getting anywhere near what um, ATI is claiming, so I'm not sure. Um, I test pretty regularly um, with that. My last test was like um, 0.14 phosphate, I think is what it was. And uh, ATI claimed that it was uh, 0.01. So big, big difference. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'll get to talking about that in just a little bit, but I wanted to go ahead and fix uh, some of the mistakes that I made on some of these corals, naming them wrong. Uh, some of them, sorry, something sounding weird over here. Uh, let's see here. I wanted to fix some of the names, and then I also wanted to um, uh, name the ones that I couldn't remember, which was damn near half of these things it felt like um so here we go let's start with uh voodoo magic so this is cc voodoo magic this coral uh doesn't look excellent right now i wouldn't say the colors are great it's usually a lot brighter this is uh this t this coral has been banked so it's been cut a few times um polyp extension check definitely on point so that is the uh voodoo magic i said cc voodoo magic yeah that's that's right okay uh pink lemonade so the last uh video of my sps uh had what 15 pink lemonades because i couldn't remember um wow so there's one in here uh which is this guy right here with the also incredible polyp extension. All right, so that's the pink lemonade. So Arc Master Yoda. I am 99% sure that's what this is, but I also don't know what this is. I thought it was a Yoda. So anyway, they don't look exactly the same or even close in my opinion. Uh, this one looks a lot better. So that is the uh, Master Yoda. So this guy right back here, I don't think you can really see him too well. I wish, I'm gonna do a top down eventually. Uh, but back in the back, there's green with some, looks like, I don't know, orange, maybe pink. Uh, I haven't even seen that extra color very, uh, very much here. Um, till I guess recently um, but that is going to be the cornbread holy grail acro uh, doesn't look very holy grillish I'll say that maybe eventually uh, that has been a very very slow grow that might as well have been the fry guy I got two years ago so very unaffected by everything just not growing not doing much so down here, uh, this one I could not remember the name of, normally do. I was gonna joke around, I called it pink lemonade. Anyway, this is a rainbow loom. Rainbow loom. Uh, up here, I think I just absolutely missed this guy. I think I missed the voodoo magic as well. But uh, So this is the shaggy dog. It's getting pretty blasted. I don't know if it 
I don't know if it loves that or not, but um, it's a pretty coral. Okay. Okay, Angry Birds. <clears throat> so this is the one I think could be an Angry Birds. And the reason I say that um, is, is because I went and looked it up again. So there's there's a couple of different... Sorry, I'm shaking. Let me switch hands here. There we go. I put the phone on my strong hand. Okay, uh, Angry Birds. I thought that this might be an Angry Birds because... Uh, if you go pull up on Google Images, ARC Angry Birds, uh, this is pretty much um, exactly what pulls up. Um, so I, I'm, I'm almost 99% sure it is. It looks similar to my um, my Cherry Bomb, like I said, but it's got just, it's different. The core lights are a little bit different. It's not, not the same. So... Anyway, it's a different price to Angry Birds as well because uh, TGC makes one that's ridiculous. I would never pay. Um, so this is a cheaper version of the Angry Birds. Uh, let's see here. Candy Crush. So this one I named just absolutely stupid. Uh, it was, it, I don't even remember what I called it. Whatever I called it, I was way off, and it is a Candy Crush. All right, so let's go to other side over here I just missed it completely that's my PC rainbow colors look like I would call this close to and very near damn it not that great uh, this one was one of the more highly affected by the acro eaten flatworms uh, that was cut off of the main and then uh, ended up being the the lone survivor of the colony, which was actually pretty good sized. That's one of the first SPS corals I got. So let me zoom out a little bit, make this somewhat seeable. Okay. Uh, Red Planet. Ha. Huh. So everything that happened to be a pink lemonade, uh, or that I was calling a, uh, the wrong name. This right here is a red planet. So I was calling everything a pink Cadillac. Wow. Okay. So this is red planet. Um, as you can see, it looks great. I'm 99% sure this is the same coral. It looks a little bit different. Actually, I'm not 99% sure. I need to stop saying stuff like that. It looks a lot different. We'll see what this one ends up being. Uh, so that's all I could get as far as names. I tried um, some of these. I just have to wait and see maybe, I don't know. But uh, that corrected most of them, I would say. Um, so just kind of keep track for me, I guess, really for my growth and to be able to discuss uh, what's done what. All right, so uh, I want to go ahead and talk about the parameters I keep this tank at. So alkalinity, uh, you hear, is, is, is the most important. I, I would have to agree with that. Um, I try to keep mine at 9. So I play the middle of the road, if you will. Um, I like 9 because it gives me a buffer zone for not only testing errors, uh, but a chance to... Um, not going to extremes so you've got uh you know some people that do the 7.6 seawater alkalinity that to me man that's that's wild because you know if you're if your test kits off one dkh well you're already way below um natural seawater uh, which i just don't i personally don't feel is safe um, now also we'll, we'll go ahead and flip that to, if you're running 12 DKH, you're also, uh, you're cruising for a bruising. Um, you, you have to play a lot different because, you know, if your nutrients start 
getting out of whack as well you know you can get burnt tips uh, you just you know it, to me it's about managing risk and so you are you're playing closer to a risky uh, a scenario that uh, I don't think will be beneficial to coil growth in the long term all it takes is just one day one bad day and uh, this can all be gone and maybe that's what makes it a little bit fun. So uh, that is, um, that's my alkalinity, nine. Uh, again, I managed that with a uh, calcium reactor and Kalkwasser. I will say this, I like Kalkwasser over everything. It uh, helps you with your pH. It's very easy, uh, especially with my setup. Because I have a large reservoir behind the window that's able to just feed it. And uh, what I actually, you know what? I'll do a whole video on that because I think that's the way you should set it up. It's not the only way, but it's the way I think you should. So I'll do a video on that. Put some safety in there and I'll talk about that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's talk about calcium, magnesium. The other two um, that are probably the more, uh, I don't know, discussed. Uh, calcium, I keep it about 430. I don't really care that much. I just want to be over 400. And calcium kind of does its thing. I am mainly managing alkalinity, and calcium will do what calcium will do. So... Uh, that's more along the lines of uh, just being in balance. Uh, magnesium, uh, I like to run 13 to 1350. That's another one I don't put a whole lot of uh, effort into. I don't even test magnesium with a manual test uh, unless something's just looking not right. And uh, I do dose extra ESV magnesium, and then uh, my calcium reactor has. Uh, mag, I don't know what those are, mag rocks in there as well, but I don't dose a lot of uh, effluent on my calcium reactor, so I'm not really getting much out of that. Uh, magnesium, that's just one that you just, you don't have to pay attention to as much. Okay, um, at least keep it steady. I will say that don't I, I, I might be saying that wrong so don't I don't pay attention to it as much because my system's pretty balanced out um, water test every week is probably something good to subscribe to um, with my trident I, I heavily rely on it I trust it I've had it for I don't know, two years and it is it hasn't uh, hasn't Steered me wrong yet. I do calibrate it though. Every machine needs to be calibrated. And so that's uh, that's what I rely on. Uh, for nitrates and phosphates, I did speak about that a little bit. Um, nitrates, I was dosing nitrates, ESV nitrate. I like ESV by the way. So I was dosing nitrates and was running on a NIOS test kit about five. Uh, nitrates which I don't chase that number um, I don't I don't subscribe to um, too high of nutrients as far as uh, a reasonable amount it's just you see too many systems that um, can do well look at Milev's tank Mark Levinson I mean his nitrates are high uh, Snoop Dogg high okay uh he tries and he's done a lot of things he kind of uh he kind of experiments a little bit and uh so he's done a lot a lot of different things to try to get them down and some things have been successful for him um but it kind of just goes to show that you can run a successful reef with numbers everywhere so i don't get caught up in that too much um i like to just 
monitor them. I don't know why. Uh, it's it's not something I've seen uh, a big difference on. I've ran higher nutrients, all the same. Lower nutrients, basically the same. Now what I will say is low nutrients as in zero, nope, not a fan. Not a fan at all. Um, corals will pell out, which I believe is actually what's happened to some of these corals here. Specifically this one, which I talked about and think is a very colorful coral in the right uh, nutrients. This one, pelling out. Uh, this one, a little pale. You know, but then you can come over to a home record that's just popping. Anyway, so uh, don't subscribe to um, low nutrients whatsoever. Uh, and you may already know why that would be. Uh, that is dinos. So, uh, and also it's an extreme. Stay away from extremes if you can. That's some advice that I, that I try to give. Um, play the middle ground. You know, things, uh, corals, animals adapt. So play um, the middle ground. Let's call it that. Okay. Uh, so phosphate. I, I pay attention more to phosphate than, I don't know, maybe I should, but... Phosphate, I believe, to be a more crucial. Actually, let me back up one, one to one thing here, uh, with low nitrate and dinos. Dinos, I have fought and beat dinos three times. Uh, I don't believe it was from low nutrients. Actually, I know it wasn't because I had fairly high nutrients at the time. What I found every single time that I was getting dinos was because I was dosing amino acids. Uh, I still dose amino acids just a little less regularly. Um, but uh, if you're heavy dosing uh, amino acids and you are experiencing dinos, stop dosing amino acids. I feel like that is a, a wild, uh, it's, it's like wildfire. For them like they just get to spread all over the place it's like a fuel so my advice do not dose amino acids if you're fighting dinos and i'll just say this dinos suck um, there's a program um, the cruise method and that's what i used uh cruise is awesome that guy is, is so smart um, if you've never talked to him in um, you know, personally, the man knows uh, a lot, and um, I trust I trust his program. I used it. I used it with uh, full blown reef with zero losses, none. Uh, follow the instructions on that. Uh, maybe that'll be a video I do. Um, there's kind of already videos out on that, but if you got questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But Okay, enough about that. Dinos suck. Uh, phosphate. So I like to stay under 0.1. Now that is uh, just because that's what you hear is the right thing to do. But also I'll say um, I feel like that's playing that middle ground. So uh, low, low phosphate um, to me is probably one of the worst things you can have in your tank. Um, you know, corals have to have phosphate. They have to. That's a known thing. That's an absolute. They have to have phosphate in the water column. Uh, or in the water, not in the water column. They have to have phosphate. They cannot survive without it. So if you're starving your corals, you may pull some, some colors out that you like. And that's, uh, that's some of these guys that are just crazy experts that can run that razor's edge. Uh, with lower nutrients, nitrates and phosphates. But uh, I'll say this, you can find a lot of reefers that run higher nutrients and their colors are just jacked. I mean, they're awesome. They, next level, okay? Now, hmm, some of that is gonna be bluing it out with some, some crazy filtering, but I just don't like, you should not have low phosphates. 
being zero. Zero is dangerous. Um, I'll say, especially if you have a mixed reef, I didn't, uh, also didn't really mention, you know, I guess that, that is a, uh, a caveat as well. A mixed reef is just crazy hard, uh, at least at some point, because these corals really do like different flows. I mean, they're all found different spots of the reef and you're like, Hey guys, we'll put y'all pretty much together. And uh, you're going to pretty much have the same flow. It'll be maybe a little different. You'll have a little bit different light. Um, but basically, you're sitting in the same spot on the reef. Good luck. So it gets hard. Um, it's a finding a balance. Um, anyway. So phosphate, I like to be around 0.1. My last test, I use, a, uh, I use the Hanna checker. And it was 0.14. Um, according to the the ATI test, it was uh, like I said. I think it was point oh two. Point. It was it was wild low. Um, nitrate was zero, I think, or point zero one was nitrate. What? So anyway, I need to go ahead and do some more manual testing. Maybe get another test kit. Mine aren't expired, but. Um, I, I have done some different stuff in the tank though. I have been feeding uh, a little bit more and I have also been uh, doing a little bit more water changes uh, because the readings I'm getting uh, with my manual test are, are a little bit different um, or, or a little higher than what I was getting with ATI. So anyway, uh, Phosphates, um, when they start getting high, I use Phosphate RX. I'll just tell you right now, that is easy to use. I love Phosphate RX, which is just lanthanum chloride. Uh, there is a way to use it, so um, make sure you follow instructions on that. Don't just go overdosing that crap uh, because you will bottom out your phosphate and kill your coral. I think I did mention that zero phosphate is terrible so uh, actually what I do is I I pull the cup uh, or the lid off the skimmer and I put it directly into the middle of the skimmer and then I'll let the skimmer overflow a little bit and that pulls the phosphate down that's what I use I don't use a sock I hate socks most people recommend a five micron sock it's just too much it's easy go sit in your skimmer let your skimmer do its thing um, let's see here what else uh well so as far as the rest of the water quality it i got like a 96 score on one and the rest were 100 so you know whatever um uh, whatever that means pretty uh always score pretty high on that that ati test but you know i don't i don't know how much weight i put into that um corals look fairly decent I'll say this, it's going to be interesting once I get all my fish back in here and uh, start having to feed them some more. And that's kind of why I've been more heavily feeding. Um, I'm going to be uh, really trying to get this reef to think that there is a bunch of fish in here because in a few weeks there will be. Um, the ammonia, uh, that's one thing I am worried about. I went ahead and bought some some bio bricks, some bacteria, some ammonium, ammonia chloride, or ammonium chloride. Anyway, it's Dr. Tim's. And I'm actually gonna start dosing that in my tank for the next, uh, just until the fish get here, uh, to simulate there being a bunch of fish. And then what I'll do is I'll feed light at first and I will do water changes every other day. Uh, my system for water changes is very, very easy to do because I have a window right here, just dump it on the ground, and then my hose just comes in my tank and I pump it right in. So it's easy. I can do it all from uh, just reaching through the window. Uh, so that's really it. Um, there will probably be something I really wanted to talk about that I forgot, but looks like there will always be another video I can do. Man, how can someone ramble for 24, call it 25 minutes? All right, everyone. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I love that I'm getting some subscribers. 
being a new channel, it's kind of hard. I don't know if it's the YouTube algorithm, um, but I am going to try to keep putting content out. And I promise you I will have some cool fish to look at very soon. Uh, I will share as many of experiences as I can and hope to lead you down the right path. If you have questions, please comment. I don't think I've got one comment in any of my videos. My feelings are hurt. Anyway, I appreciate everybody uh, subscribing and liking the videos, though. And uh, if you haven't, I would also appreciate if you would do that right now. So thanks, everyone. Y'all have a great day.